get an opportunity to tell who he was, to show his license. He was sitting in front of his house, calling for, called in for them to open up the door, and he was going right around the corner to be with his, his lover. <laughs> That's his woman. <laughs> He always thinks about her all the time. And so um, he didn't make it. The police brutally, maliciously assassinated my son. They didn't know who he was. They jumped on top of the roof. I mean, they jumped on top of the hood of the car and continuously shot him until they killed him. They're liars. My son never made it out of his car alive. They didn't even give him a chance to tell him who he was or even ask for driver's license or anything. They made sure that they killed him. And then they called him a gang member. They told all kind of lies on him. After they have brutally killed him. And my, what I'm wondering and I'm hoping and I'm praying that justice will be served for him. You know, he, he had a family. He had a life that was stolen from him. He loved himself. There was no doubt in my mind that he didn't love himself. And he would have never got out of no car wagging no guns around. Of course, some fake guns. <laughs> Any kind of uh, any limitations, like just, you know, it's, it's just a sick-minded person mm -hmm. to do what they've done to him. So, and I, I would like to change things with the Lord's help. I am going to change. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I feel like that those officers should have been drug tested. I mean, it's really, it's really a sad situation to to have confidence in the police department, and they're killing us. They're harassing us. They're beating us down. But for them to kill my child. I'm not supposed to be bearing my kid. He's supposed to be bearing me. They took my son's life. They stole his life. And then they stole his body. They kidnapped his body. They treated me like I was a criminal at the hospital. They treated me on the scene of the crime with big old double barrel guns in my face, talking about they gonna arrest me and take me to jail and I need to take some medicine before I drop dead. I need to leave and go and relax. And I waited at the hospital for hours. The hospital allowed a security guard to say that he knew he was a friend of the family, which he was not. To say he identified my son's body and in front of everybody, no closure, no nothing, no, no privacy or anything, and said, Mario Romero expired at 5.03. I was at the hospital for two and a half hours waiting, hoping. They killed my, they killed my boy. 
brutally killed something. They brutally killed him. They maliciously assassinated him. He never said a mumbling word. And then they lied on him and tried to make him be a gang member. That he was on parole. Like he had been to prison. Like he was a drug dealer. Yes. They give all of them that type. All of them. They treated my child like he was not a human being. I had a, a, you know, I'm just still not trying, I haven't seen his body yet. But I've heard, you know, an expert say, you know, he was shot in the face a lot of times. Don't hold on to that, Mama. Don't hold on to that. They treated my child like he was nothing. But I know that there is a man that's dead. He said, in my father's house, there's many mansions. He said, if it wasn't, I would have told you something. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Well, you know, he's up there in one of those mansions now. You know. And, it's, and I know it's going to be a long, it's, it's going to be a, a battle, you know. But you know what? It ain't my battle. It's battle. It ain't my battle. And I know he's not going to give me no more than I can bear. So I'm going to keep my hope and I'm going to keep my faith that justice will be served and that a whole lot of people that, that his death will not be in vain. That someday things will change for the living. That these young people will be able to freely walk around without being harassed by the police. They can sit in their car. I, I was, you know, used to sit in my car because I sit in there and talk on the phone. I sit in there and drink my coffee or whatever. That was my little spot where I would sit by myself. My son was parked in front of his house. That was a demonic force. Yes. Uh, it had to be. But I was trying to get to my son just so I could just hold his hand or something. They refused to let me get to my family. They refused to let me. I had so much faith that if I touch him, that he would stay alive. And I do believe it. But they denied me that. The police denied me that. But big old double barrel shotguns in my face. My children looking out the window, watching their brother get brutally shot by the police. Watch them drag his body, his dead body. It's really a sad situation to see a heart that can be so cold, that can brutally just kill someone that's supposed to be authority with the law. You think the law is supposed to you know, if I know they're supposed to do the right thing. 
Thank you. 